House report outlining how climate change is fueling increased migration from Guatemala to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Research confirmed that crop shortages linked to climate change are leading to extreme poverty and hunger. But President Trump cut aid to Guatemala, Honduras and El Salvador in April. Jacob Soboroff is on the ground in Guatemala City. And Jacob, first, give us a little bit of context on the flow of Guatemalans to the U.S. recently. How many of them headed north uh, last year and how big of an issue is this? Uh, over 100,000, Allison. Oh, Guatemala wow. is the largest sending country of migrants coming to the United States both last year uh, and fiscal year 2018 and 2019, which is why this is such a big deal. The bottom line is the Trump administration produced its own evidence that climate change and climate change linked food insecurity is fueling migration to the United States. People are literally starving on the ground here. Mm. Uh, and the foreign aid, the foreign assistance that the U.S. would give to this country to help people down here, uh, they decided not to double down on it in order to slow and stop the migration and ultimately to save lives, uh, but to cancel it entirely. So, Jacob, I mean, this is significantly contributing to the increased number of undocumented immigrants uh, coming to the southwest border of the U.S. Can you just talk about, you know, overall the problem that we're dealing with there? Well, let me put it to you this way. What mm -hmm. would you do if you were starving, literally starving to death? I went to a village called Las Sopas in mm -hmm. Esquipulas, the department, uh, like basically one of the states here in Guatemala. And in Las Sopas, last year, five children died of malnutrition. It's something that plays out all across this country. The World Food Program brought us there to actually show us what the conditions are on the ground. And without the World Food Program, who is there in an emergency capacity right. and an emergency response to save lives, you'd probably have more kids uh, dying. I asked the kids God. there to raise their hands uh, and tell me how many people knew uh, folks that left to the United States, and about half of them did. And it's it's not, it's, it's a no-brainer. What would you do, like I said to you, right. if your family was starving to death? You would leave in order to get help. That's what people are doing all throughout Guatemala, particularly in places like Weiwei Tanago in the Western Highlands, uh, where coffee and the coffee plant is being decimated by something called coffee leaf rust, a fungus that's spreading rapidly due to climate change. So while climate change is not the only factor that's pushing people out of Guatemala, starvation really is, there are many factors which ultimately contribute to it. And it's something the Trump administration not only knows about, not only has their own evidence about, uh, but is completely ignoring in terms of defunding uh, help through programs like USAID on the ground. Here. Yeah, Jacob, let's talk about that for a moment more, because as you mentioned, we have this internal White House report outlining how this is a problem. Trump administration obviously aware of it, cutting aid there. Uh, are, are they acknowledging in any way that something needs to be done, uh, uh, considering a reversal in approach? Kevin McAleenan, the acting secretary of Homeland Security, has been sounding the alarm on this actually for quite some time, for about a year. Uh, but what we heard, Julia Ainsley and I, my colleague mm -hmm. who I reported this story with, is that people are essentially scared to go in front of Stephen Miller uh, and talk to him about climate change. Uh, another source within the U.S. government told us that putting forward a solution uh, to migration that's connected to climate change presupposes that the Trump administration actually cares about climate change. And I think therein lies the problem. When you yeah. know something is happening, but you don't believe or you don't or you feign not to believe that it actually exists, um, the Trump administration has decided not to do anything about it. And not only not to do anything about it, but remove aid and assistance and help uh, that is positively contributing to people. I mean, I talked to a source today who said that this money is already being pulled out of the U.S. Uh, foreign aid down here. And there are communities today that don't have the assistance that they had maybe a month or two months ago that was designed to help people stay in their communities and ultimately uh, survive. I mean, Jacob, if we, we know what the root problem is or part of the root problem is, we're unwilling to address what that is, unwilling to acknowledge it, afraid to talk about it. But as you're speaking, people are literally on the brink of dying from starvation. Uh, how do you solve? I mean, this is a dire problem that appears to need immediate attention. Yeah, and I will say there are, there are agencies on the ground that are no longer waiting on the United States. The World Food Program does not rely on funding directly from it's U.S. Uh, foreign aid. There are uh, organizations like Columbia University. They were down here uh, with their next gen initiative. They're doing with the Colombian, uh, excuse me, with the Guatemalan government in order to give seasonal forecasting tools to farmers so they know when to plant their crops so that the crops don't spoil because of drought. They don't spoil because of coffee leaf rust. Um, there are initiatives. There are things that can be done on the ground today 
to better uh, protect uh, these farmers and planning for the future. Um, but the United States at this point has basically signaled they don't want to be a part of that. Yeah, Jacob, I was going to ask, are we in that, that situation now where it's just a matter of you need to work around the U.S. because we just aren't willing to cooperate uh, on any of these yes. initiatives or to help in any way? That's exactly right. So you have all kinds of organizations that are operating out here from Save the Children to the World Food Program. Um, USAID had a program called Feed the Future on the ground here. They're not going to Guatemalans and rural communities are not going to be able to rely on funding from that program any longer. So they're going to have to turn to sources that independently fundraise. The Guatemala, Guatemalan Ministry of Agriculture is going to have to step up. Um, but the reality is the United States is one of the most prosperous countries in the world. Right. It is in the interest of the United States if they do not want people coming uh, illegally across the southern border from Guatemala. Again, the country that's sending the most people to find a solution to this crisis, to fund solutions to this crisis. But the reality is now on the ground. You're going to have to find solutions that are outside of the United States. Jacob, it would be very interesting to see if the uh, the U.S. decides that we're going to acknowledge that problem, if only uh, to address that immigrant issue, as you mentioned. Uh, we know that's something that obviously uh, the Trump administration is concerned about. We shall wait and see. Thank you, sir. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.